everyone and welcome back to my studio, the Pottery Corner down on the south coast of England. Hi everybody, uh, today we are going to be looking at how to turn this used glaze brushes and empty glaze pots into something that you can use to make your own confetti glaze. So I call it hundreds and thousands because it's like sprinkling hundreds and thousands on a cake. Um, so today I'm going to show you how I make my glaze chips and then use it on my work. So I'll just run through very quickly a few bits of equipment that you're going to need. First of all, obviously, you need uh, dirty glaze brushes. So as you can see, I have loads of glaze brushes, loads and loads. And I have this sitting on the sink in the studio so that students know that they are not to wash their glaze brushes in the water and then obviously that glaze goes down the sink. A, it's not good for my bank balance, and B, it's definitely not good for the environment to put glaze products down the sink and get it into the sewage system. So trying to think slightly ecological and also financial on both fronts. This is how I recycle um, an important part of the pottery process into something that I can actually use. So I've got my dirty glaze brushes, um, I've also saved up over the last sort of week or so any of my glaze pots that have um, been used up. Uh, I also have pots that the students have poured glaze into um, and they've used it out of a pot rather than out of the actual um, glaze pot itself. Quite often if the students are here and they're both using the same colour glaze will decant a little bit into a pot so I keep those as well. Um, I have a knife, I have a metal kidney, I have a metal kidney, um, I have a piece, <laughs> a well used piece of acetate which you don't have to have acetate, you could use the, you know these plastic wallets that you use for documents, something that is flexible um, that you can then scrunch. Um, these are perfect for this, acetates equally are perfect, so you'll need something that is flexible, not paper, because obviously it will stick to the paper and it'll soak into the paper. So you need something that has, that has a waterproof surface so it's not going to run into it. Um, and that really is all you need. And then you'll need a pot that you designate uh, to be your hundreds and thousands. So this pot, which is nearly full, I hope you can see that on the camera with all the flakes and bits and pieces. Um, I just have this one pot uh, that's called hundreds and thousands, which is what I call this, um, what I call my glaze chips. Um, and then I keep them all in here. Later on, we're going to use uh, a bowl and a sieve. So I have a sieve. Um, I use this sieve to make my slip, um, but I mean, you could use any fine mesh sieve. Uh, it doesn't have to be a pottery one. Uh, if you've got a particularly fine one in your kitchen, that would do just as well. And then just a little plastic bowl um, to sieve into. OK, so that's all we need in the way of equipment. So get your equipment together and join me to save money on glaze. Right, so I'm going to use this very well used piece of um, acetate. If the brushes are dry, which all of these brushes that I'm using here will have dry, They've, they're completely dry. Um, so, you know, the glaze is dried onto these brushes. What I'm going to do, and, and the, um, the artists out there will be shouting at the screen going, you can't do that to brushes. Well, yeah, sorry, um, but I don't use them for painting. I only use them for glaze. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to take my knife and I get off anything that's on the handle or on the metal part of the brush. There's a word for that, it begins with F. If you know it, write it in the comments. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, and then I'm just going to just loosen the glaze on top of my uh, piece of acetate and wiggle it out. I mean, it's all in kind of powder form. Um, wear a mask for this because, uh, because glaze dust isn't good for you. So do make sure that you put a mask on. Uh, so I'm just literally taking out any glaze that le is left on that brush. And I sometimes use my, my knife just to uh, get out as much as I can. And that brush is now almost completely clean of glaze. So when I come to wash it, hardly anything is going down the sink. 
and then I just make my way through all of my brushes. Now you can see if you look at this brush that I have um, wiped it once with the knife when the, when the glaze was wet. So I try to do that if I can and actually put the knife down on the acetate and run the knife over it to get the wet glaze off. Sometimes that's not possible if I've got a class of, of students and they're all using glaze brushes. It's just not possible to try and do it every time. Um, so I'm just going to spend a little while just getting all of this off of here in this way off of the brushes, which it, it does take it does take a little while, but I mean, you know, you're, you are making yourself another project to use in your studio. So use that time wisely. Uh, sometimes I do it if I'm just chatting to people and I'll just stand and uh, wiggle the glaze out of the uh, out of the brushes. So that's how I deal with the brushes. I will continue to uh, get the glaze out. This one's got a little bit more on it. I don't know if you can see that. So again, I'm just going to take it off of the metal part, snap the bristle. This is where the artist will be going. Oh, she's snapping the bristles. Yeah, I don't worry too much about it. Uh, as you probably know, I buy these fan-shaped brushes in the pound shop here. So Poundland sell, sell them and they are a pound. So I always have a, a good stock of them because we use, as you can see, we use a lot of brushes. Uh, so I don't worry too much if I'm, I'm going to break um, bristles and bits and pieces. So I'm just, I, I'm not really very kind to my brushes is what I'm trying to say. When they get beyond it, I just throw them away and buy another one for a pound. It's not like I'm using uh, good quality artists brushes. They're just makeup brushes that have been repurposed into glaze brushes. So again, trying to get as much as I can out of this one. This one's got a bit more glaze in it. It hasn't been wiped on the pot so well. So I'm just trying to get as much as I can out of those bristles. Right, okay. So you'll be noticing at this stage that most of what is coming off of the brushes is um, basically powder. There are a few larger bits, um, which you might well be able to see, but generally speaking, what comes off of the brushes mostly is the powder. And the way that I get more chunks is by taking it off of the pots. So this pot, this lid, um, has got a, if I can get it out, it's got a liner in the lid. You can see, yeah, here it comes. So it's got a liner in the lid. Um, so I'm just going to just take off using my knife and already I hope you can see that these are much more flakes than the dust that we were getting out of the brushes so this is much more flaky um, and that is really what we want for our confetti glaze is to have um, the chips rather than the powder but it all goes in and then in this lid I leave them to dry completely so this is this has been I don't know a few days out on the side and then I, I am pedantic enough to just use my knife to get out absolutely everything that I can get out um, because otherwise it's wasted and it would go it would go in the bin so you know we might as well use what we've paid for I mean glaze as you know is an expensive commodity and I write on the bottom of my glaze pots how much they've cost when I bought them so this small um, pot of bots I can't it oh it does tell me 200 mil so I mean you know that's what's that um third of a pint small very small uh was nine pound 43 so I mean you know that's a lot of money uh so I've taken out most of what I can get out of the lid just by using my knife just to scratch off uh the glaze that's on the surface there okay and then I'm going to do the same with the pot sometimes you can just um, flex the pots and, and it will pop off. And in fact, the Amoco pots are better from that for that. Um, if I just do, if I just, you know, basically press the pot, you can see all of that glaze chipping away from the outside of the pot. And now in here, I've got big chunks. OK, so those are big chunks of glaze in there. Look at that. So they will make really good 
um, chunks to go onto a piece. In fact, that's had that's the lid. So that the lid that had um, all the glaze on it. I mean, it's quite it's actually quite thick. So I'm just going to take those out and just break them up a little bit. Um, and then I've put the new pot, the new, the next time, having somebody having used this smoky Merlot, uh, the next new pot, I've just put the, um, the ceiling lid into the, uh, pot just so that I've, I can use that as well. Um, as I say, I am a bit, I do have OCD. I should tell you that. I think my regular viewers probably know. I do have a bit of OCD. Um, I hate waste. Waste is one of the things that I, I find very difficult in life in general. Uh, I, I don't like wasting things. So if I've, if I've got a chance to uh, reuse it in some way, then I will. So if I just tip this onto the, onto the acetate, you can see how much has come out. I mean, there's still more to come out of that pot, but you can see how much has come out of that pot that would have gone in the bin. So that's a lot. Um, so again, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just getting rid of what's in these pots. I also go round the necks of the pot um, to get all of that off that's been in the, in the screw top. I mean, you know, it's amazing how much you can make just out of the little bits that are round the top of a screw top. Look at that see so that's how i'm going to collect my glaze um, and then in a moment i'll reset the camera and we can have a look at what i do with it then i'm sure you will have seen people on instagram um, saving glaze chips and my favorite my most favorite one that makes me laugh every time i see it is um, jeanette from far forest ceramics so hello jeanette i know you'll be watching um, because we've had discussions before when I've done the kiln openings uh, because Jeanette actually makes glaze chips because she particularly wants to use them on her work um, and she makes her own colours so she keeps each colour of glaze chip in its own little pot right so she's got all the colours of her glazes in chips and I do remember once upon a time I don't think she does it now and I'm sure Jeanette will comment in the comments if you want to have a look at what Jeanette has to say about it um, that uh, she she splits up the sizes of her chips into small medium and large I mean so those would be large and that one would perhaps be medium and then you know something like that maybe the small can you imagine having three different pots, small, medium and large, in chip colours of every glaze you have. Now, uh, last count of glazes was about 86. And then I bought 12 new ones from Mako. And then I've bought a couple of boxes. So I do know that I'm over 100 pots of glaze. In fact, I'm too frightened to count them because I'm sure my husband, who does watch these videos, would probably be absolutely flabbergasted how many different types of glaze are in the studio. Um, but say, say just for argument's sake that I conservatively have a hundred different colours of glaze, that would be 300 pots if I did a small, medium and large. Oh my, mind blown, mind blown. So no, we can't, I can't go there. I drive myself mad with it, but it does make me laugh when I watch, uh, I watch Jeanette's videos. So I'm just, as I said, I'm just as we're talking, just chipping away at this you get the idea basically let your pots dry completely uh, and then take as much of that off as you can um, onto a, an acetate or similar um, I mean you can be completely pedantic but to be honest with you I have got most of that out of that pot if you remember what it looked like at the start um, and as I say looking at this pile of, um, of glaze just just from that one pot, it's a lot of glaze, isn't it? I mean, you know, there's quite a bit there. Uh, right, so I'm going to carry on doing the brushes and doing the um, the pots. And, and when I get to the end, I'll show you the pile just so that you've got some idea of how much glaze we're talking about.
Right, so that's um, the brushes half done. I'm not actually going to do any more now. So they are now ready, these brushes, as you can see, for washing. So I'm going to put those in the sink and then we'll come back and I'll show you the very saddest way that I collect my glaze chips. Right, so um, from those brushes and those pots, uh, of which there were four large pots, two small pots, three little bowls and the lids. Um, so that's all that this pile of glaze chips has actually come from. So you can see how much glaze we're talking about just from a small amount. Um, so I'm just going to pour that into my hundreds and thousands pot off of the acetate. The reason for using the acetate is if you're using wet brushes and taking the glaze out of the wet brushes, uh, obviously you want it to go onto a non-porous surface so that you can actually then just scrape it off. Uh, and that's what I usually do if the brushes are wet. So we've been using uh, dry brushes today, but if the brushes are wet, I just put them on. In fact, you can see on here, you know, that's a brush, that's a brush, that's a brush, that's a brush. And then I'm just coming afterwards with the um, kidney and just taking that off once it's dry. Um, so you get quite good chip formation from that rather than the, the dust. Okay, so I've now done that and um, the eagle-eyed of you will see that we have been working on a plastic tablecloth. So on this plastic tablecloth are all the bits that we have been playing with today. Uh, but also, this, uh, the girls uh, in the studio use these tablecloths for glazing because then I can actually uh, take the chips off. I'm just going to move you around a little bit over here. Uh, so here we have some glazed chips. So I'm just going to loosen that with the side of the rubber kidney. Rather than trying to um, make it into dust, I'm just going to lift off what I can lift off. And there again, yes, I know it's sad, but those little bits of glaze might be the difference between one colour and another colour. So I do chip, I do chip everything off of the tablecloth as well, which I realise is very sad, but very satisfying not to be putting it on a cloth down the sink. So again, all of that that's just come off of the tablecloth itself is now in my glaze chip pot. And I'm going to stick a lid on that so I know that that is safe and not likely to get knocked over. And then we'll sh I'll show you what I do with it after that. Right, so I've taken my mask off. Um, I haven't used a full respirator. If you have one, it would be useful. But I don't actually have one, so I just use a dusk mask just to so that I'm not breathing the dust in. Right, so I haven't actually got anything to show you. Uh, in terms of actually, I'm not going to glaze something now, but I am going to show you the rudiments of how I would do that. So here's our lovely pot of hundreds and thousands that we were using earlier. Uh, before I use it, I do tend to just give it a bit of a shake. It is getting quite full now, so um, it's not moving about quite as much as it was. So in that instance, I am just going to pop it, some of it into my bowl so I'm just going to give myself a goodly a goodly portion in my bowl that I can just kind of mix reason for doing that is pretty obvious really because obviously a lot of the chips that have just come uh, into the top are the colors that we were that we were working with so the, the tubs that we were working with one of those being smoky merlot and I just want to have a reasonable um, mixture of colours together. Um, so I'm actually now just going to put my mask back on and just pop that back into the pot because um, I'm going to use it from the pot through the sieve. So I'm just going to pop my mask back on and uh, we'll just get that done. Right, so again, that's uh, back in its pot. Um, I am just going to put this on to do this next bit because obviously I'm going to be using the pot. So I'm just going to put my dust mask back on 
so this is my sieve. This, as I say, is a pottery sieve. Um, it's uh, 60 mesh. Doesn't have to be, just needs to be a mesh that's going to take out the larger pieces to the smaller pieces. And then I'm just going to pop an amount of glazed chips into my sieve. And then I'm just going to pass the powder through. So I'm just giving this a tap against my finger to get some of the powder out because you do end up with a lot more powder than flake. The powder's useful too, so it's not that it's not useful, it's just that in this particular instance I want to separate the larger particles from the smaller particles. Um, and secondly, in this uh, mix, you can probably see there's some very dark blue pieces and I happen to know that those dark blue pieces are not going to melt as well. So I'm just going to, with my finger, take the lumps and then just, just press them so that I've got the colour but not the lump. So you might find there's something in your glaze when you use it that would do that. So you're wise to just kind of have a little flick through it and just see. Um, and then I'm just going to just get a little bit more of the dust out. As you can see, there's a lot in there. Um, and this is what we're left with in our glazed chips. So we've got the larger particles. And as I say, I'm just going to spend 30 seconds just double checking that I haven't got anything in there that I might not want in great big blobs on my on my piece. So I'm just I just remember that when I put some chips in that they were from something that uh, will cause that. So just being careful not to leave myself with big chips of things. Okay. I think we're there. You can obviously just spend time just checking yours for whatever you think might be in yours that shouldn't be in blobs. Okay, so then I'm left with the sandy powdery stuff in the bowl and the larger chips in the sieve, which is the bits that I want to use. Right, so I've... Um, I'm going to take this off. So I have rescued a piece off of the glaze shelf. So this is a bowl that I've thrown. Uh, and I have already put the glazed chips on, as you can see. Uh, so how I've done this is, this is wax resist, the brown on the bottom. Uh, and then I've added uh, two coats of my transparent. At the moment, we're using the Mako um, brush on transparent. Uh, but I didn't want it to be on this section, or to leave this raw clay. So because I'm sprinkling um, the glazed chips on, I've... I have wax resisted it so that it doesn't go on there. And then I've just put probably more of the powder, as you can see, uh, round the back. And then on the front, I have basically just drizzled, like hundreds and thousands on a cake, sprinkled uh, the glazed chips onto slightly wet transparent glaze so it hasn't completely dried. Now you can manipulate them somewhat if you wanted a particular chip, a larger chip like I've done here on the rim. If your glaze has dried just stick a blob of glaze on the back and put it where you want it. Um, it's going to move where it wants to move. In this state it really doesn't look terribly attractive um, but this bowl has been done in exactly the same way. So you can see how the glazed chips then melt away onto your piece. Uh, and that's basically what you get. You get a, you know, a splash of colour from one particular glaze that you've uh, made a chip from. Um, and they all come out slightly different. So these three bowls uh, were done at the same time. So this bowl, this bowl, and indeed this bowl were all glazed at the same time. So I've put um, make, uh, Amico's Obsidian on the back, uh, but they are fairly similar. I mean, you never get the same, uh, you never get the same colours right the way through, but you can see 
that from our studio glazes we probably use a lot more blues and greens than we do reds and oranges but it is nice to have the pops of colour from the browns, from the pinks, from the reds so you get this lovely pattern and I know talking about Jeanette earlier I know that she uses um uh, is it Mako Cordova? Tell us, Jeanette, in the in the comments. She likes Cordova and another glaze in chips on her plate. So, Jeanette, if you're watching, just stick it in the comments so everybody can see it. Um, this particular bowl was done at a slightly different time. So, just um, in terms of the glazed chips that were in the pot at the time, were obviously slightly different to the glazed chips that are in there now. So that's why I say you can never really tell what you're going to get. But actually, I quite like that. I quite like the. Uh, the Forrest Gump about it, if you know what I mean. Life is like a box of chocolates. Yeah, um, I don't need to say the rest of the quote. You all know what it is. Um, so yeah, so that's how I save glaze from going down the sink. Uh, save glaze because it costs me money and also make my own unique hundreds and thousands glazed chips to use on my work. So I hope that's been helpful. Drop in the comments, tell me what you think. Tell me how you do it. Do you, do you save your glaze? Um, let me know. It's really interesting to find out how other people manage their glaze, uh, but that's the way that I do it and I hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, keep watching for more content from the Pottery Corner. There's always something going on here and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.